Lucius is a small, weak boy who is constantly bullied by some big boys. One evening, his grandfather, Cassius, takes Lucius with him to the bathhouse. There, Titus, one of the bullies, comes and starts teasing Lucius. So, Lucius goes underwater to ignore him. When he comes back out again, he comes out in a place that is definitely not Rome. He goes back inside and returns to the bathhouse again. There, his grandfather talks fondly about the great cultural influences that the bathhouses of Rome have had. After some time, Cassius leaves for a moment, so Titus spoils the nice moment again, calling the bathhouses a silly place. Lucius takes this personally because his father and grandfather are the ones who spent their entire lives building this bathhouse. He fights Titus, saying that he'll be a great bathhouse architect. Cassius overhears this, and he is one proud grandpa. Hearing Lucius's words, Titus hesitates and beats him up. Later, Cassius gives Lucius his blessing and tells him to make bathhouses that can wash away all anger from this world. Many years have passed, and Cassius has passed away. Lucius has also grown up to be a strong and handsome man, and he did become an architect, studying it in Athens. Now he plans to design bathhouses in Rome. Titus has also grown up, become a butcher, married, and he even has a kid now. He congratulates Lucius for following his dreams. Titus also apologizes to Lucius for teasing him when they were young. Now, he's come to appreciate the bathhouses. Lucius designs a bathhouse that is an homage to a previous time of Rome, but his superior says that the designs are too outdated. Ever since Hadrian became the emperor, Rome has entered a prosperous time of peace where all architects are competing to create newer and fresher designs. Lucius is extra angry because he gave up honka honka time with his wife, Livia, to finish the designs. In order to cheer him up, his childhood friend, Marcus, takes him to a bathhouse. Lucius starts overthinking about a new and innovative design that will get the attention of the people. He goes down to check the drain of the bathhouse, but the strong current pulls him in. Lucius goes through a trippy journey through the cosmos and finally lands in modern-day Japan. Since the bathhouse is relatively smaller than what he's used to, Lucius thinks that this is the slave section, but he is amazed by the strange and unique products that they seem to be using down here. When he goes to the locker, he is even more shocked by the bulletin boards, the big mirror, and the fan which can create wind out of nothing. Lucius still believes that these people are slaves of the Roman Empire. He goes outside and is immediately assaulted by the pollution. I feel you, brother. Back inside, one of the Japanese gives him sweet milk to drink. It's so lovely, Lucius wets himself. Suddenly, he loses consciousness and wakes back up in ancient Rome. He thinks that he saw a dream, but the bottle of juice is still with him, proving that he really did go to a different place. Sometime later, Lucius takes everything he saw as inspiration and recreates it into a Roman bathhouse. Bulletin boards, a giant painting, milk drinks fixed with fruit. Everyone likes the new bathhouse. Lucius becomes popular overnight, but he's still not satisfied because he believes that he can do better. Suddenly, Marcus tells him that some people found a huge hole in the earlier bathhouse, the one where Lucius fell into. Since it's dangerous, the hole has been covered. Lucius has been having problems at home. He's not been giving his wife enough time for, <clears throat> you know. One day, an old and sick consul named Lepidus summons him outside Rome. Lucius's wife will probably kill him, but this is a summon from the consul himself, so Lucius goes. Lepidus is living right near Mount Vesuvius, and he wants an outdoor bath with a view of that mountain. He says that it's his final wish before dying. Lucius is in shock because there has never been an outdoor bathhouse. The temperatures of the waters would have to be controlled, which has never been done outdoors. While looking around for a prime location, Lucius finds a spring full which has been giving warm water since Mount Vesuvius erupted 50 years ago. Lucius goes in to investigate and he falls in. When he tries to swim back to the surface… you guessed it, he arrives in modern Japan. Lucius comes out on a hot spring especially meant for monkeys, so he gets attacked until the owner scares the monkeys away. Lucius is happy that he's arrived here so he can just plagiarize more ideas from these strange people. Lucius looks all around the place to see where the hot water comes from and where it drains too. The Japanese also show him an egg which has been heated in the spring water so that it's not too hard, nor is it too raw. Lucius tastes it, and he falls in love. He also tastes some hot spring sake, and he falls in love again. He drinks so much that he becomes drunk and loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he's back in Rome. Using everything he saw as inspiration, Lucius quickly designs an outdoor bathhouse for Lepidus. 
After some time, Lucius comes back to meet Lepidus. Turns out, Lepidus has really improved in health. He remarried, and he even has a child. He's really cheerful. There's just one problem. One of the Japanese monkeys somehow came here as well. Lepidus is confused because they've never seen monkeys before. But the monkey is peaceful, so Lepidus is also peaceful. However, Lucius is in pure shock, and he tries his best to hide it. One day, Lucius goes to meet his bestie Marcus. Despite being busy with his own sculpting work, Marcus has to spend a lot of time escorting his master to the bathhouse, who is too old to go there alone. The master says that it would be convenient if he had a bathhouse in his own home, but only the rich people of Rome can afford their own personal bathhouses. Suddenly, the old man drops something, so Lucius goes to retrieve it. When he swims back, Lucius somehow ends up in… a bathtub in Japan. The moment he goes there, he checks all the devices and items with pure wonder and curiosity. Seeing all the advanced technology, Lucius starts getting depressed as he has always believed that Rome was the pinnacle of culture and technology. But here, this strange civilization seems to have gained the upper hand. Just then, an old and forgetful man comes in because, well, this is his house. The man believes that Lucius is an elderly caretaker, so he takes everything naturally. Lucius discovers that someone can use the bathwater by just using a jug. He also gets to see the beauty of a bath towel to remove dirt. He sees the beauty of the shampoo, the drain, and the shampoo cap. Lucius starts getting an inferior complexion. He starts getting depressed, so the old man gives him a beer to drink. Lucius falls in love again. The beer is just too damn good. He starts losing consciousness, and he arrives back in the Roman bathhouse. He also accidentally brings a scrubbing towel with him. Using everything he learned, Lucius makes a personal bathhouse for Marcus's master, just like the one he saw in the other world. When a government official sees this new invention, well, he's in pure shock, so he immediately informs Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian summons Lucius to a meeting. Lucius gets nervous because Hadrian is also an architect on top of being an emperor. Emperor Hadrian asks him to build a private bath for him where he can think peacefully. He wants unique designs from Lucius, nothing old-fashioned. This is a lot of pressure because Hadrian is a great admirer of beauty and also very strict when it comes to innovation. And it must be done before Hadrian leaves for Jerusalem in one month's time. Lucius checks the moat around Hadrian's private chambers when suddenly he falls in. Of course. Meanwhile, in Japan, a receptionist named Mami prepares to meet a client who is Italian. Just then, Lucius comes out of the bathtub. Wait, Lucius is Italian? The confusion is perfect! Mami quickly gives her a bathrobe and shows him around because she thinks that he is the Italian client. As usual, Lucius becomes super focused on the showering items available there on display. Once again, he becomes sad, thinking that Rome is not as good as this mysterious civilization. Mammy shows him a TV with jellyfish on them, and Lucius believes it to be a real aquarium. When Lucius goes to the toilet, he is amazed by the automatic lid and the music. He thinks that slaves are doing all of those. Also, the automatic flush and the spray that washes his buttocks. Despite being shocked at first, he finds the whole experience soothing. Later, Mammy's manager scolds her for not receiving the Italian client. They go inside to check, but Lucius is no longer there. Looks like somebody's gonna get fired. Back in ancient Rome, Lucius has applied everything he learned to Emperor Hadrian's private bath. A personal tub, a personal aquarium, and a fountain for his commode. Hadrian is extremely pleased by Lucius. Lucius, on the other hand, is feeling like an imposter, but he does not tell the truth. Hadrian is so pleased by Lucius that he asks him to come with him on his campaign to Jerusalem. They have a pretty <clears throat> romantic moment. Hadrian goes to his campaign in Jerusalem to put down a Jewish rebellion. His men are tired from all the fighting, so Hadrian tasks Lucius with building a bathhouse here. Also, the soldiers are weak because they drank poisoned wine from the enemy, so there's also that issue. Meanwhile, Lucius is personally working with the workers to finish the bathhouse quicker, but he hurts his back and falls into the water. And of course, he arrives in modern Japan again. This time, he arrives in a healing spa high up in the mountains. Lucius is still suffering from a hurt back, so the people put him on a heated ground which helps with his circulation. Some people also give him sake to drink. However, the sake turns out to be expired and Lucius becomes sick. He immediately thinks that he's been poisoned like the other Roman soldiers, so the people give him spring water to drink. The rich minerals immediately heal him. Lucius arrives back in Rome where he uses the spring water to fix the health of the poisoned soldiers, and of course, the bathhouse is always a win. 
he brings the heated floor idea that everyone enjoys, including Emperor Hadrian himself. The spirits of the entire army is lifted, and they manage to take Jerusalem. Hadrian is pleased with him and asks him to be his personal designer. Lucius accepts, but he also asks for a vacation time back to Rome to meet his wife. Hadrian accepts and gives him a gift to give to his wife. Turns out, Lucius has been away from home for three years. He's really scared that his wife Livia will be angry at him. Lucius stops at a roadside tavern for the night. However, the hospitality is terrible and careless. The room is a mess, more like a prison room than a residence, and the food is like eating hot garbage. He asks for a bath before going to sleep, but the water is just lukewarm. Lucius slips into the water, and this time he wakes up in the Edo period of Japan. There he is shocked to see men and women bathing together. The people just believe that Lucius is a foreigner from a trade ship. Lucius immediately starts doing what he does best, which is plagiarizing the ideas from the tavern. The innkeeper lets him stay for the night. A girl who works there shows him how to wear a kimono properly. Next, he is given dinner, but he struggles with the chopsticks. The girl shows her how to do it, and Lucius finds the whole thing to be elegant. The innkeeper makes a painting of Lucius to take back home. Later, Lucius goes to take a nice bath. The girl also joins him, and she starts seducing him. But Lucius ain't no simp. He returns back to Rome. Imagine being so giga-chad that you travel through time just to escape a seductive woman. Sometime later, Emperor Hadrian arrives at the same inn where he is given a beautiful service. Hadrian is impressed. Turns out, all these changes were made by Lucius. They've also put the painting of Lucius that the Japanese innkeeper made. Despite creating so many new designs, Lucius spends some time maintaining the bathhouse that his grandfather and father built a long time ago. However, the owner informs him that he has been suffering from losses because this bathhouse has gone out of style. Also, recently, some new people have started coming and they have been causing trouble for the other customers. These men were part of the Germanic tribes, but now they've gained Roman citizenship after fighting for them for 25 years. These new citizens don't know proper Roman etiquette, so they make a mess. Lucius goes to scold them, but they beat him and he falls into the water, and he wakes up in a bathhouse in modern Japan. There, Lucius starts realizing that the Japanese have always been such polite people. Maybe the Romans should adopt that politeness as well. Suddenly, some hooligans like before come into the bathhouse and they start creating a ruckus. Lucius becomes angry at them again, so they beat him up again. So, Lucius comes in with a shield and broomstick full legionary style. However, turns out, the man is actually a fencing champion and he starts beating Lucius. But Lucius is a Roman, and Romans are good at this stuff. He manages to knock out the man's weapon. They start fighting, but they both get tired. Lucius takes his opportunity to show the men the proper etiquettes of public baths which are printed on paper. The men finally show him respect. Lucius starts being happy at his accomplishment. Back in Rome, Lucius asks Marcus to carve some engravings for the walls which show proper etiquette. With proper communication, even the new citizens understand what to do. Everyone starts bonding and the owner is thankful to him. Later, Marcus asks Lucius to do a job for a rich person. The man, Augustus, has covered his entire body in shiny golden blings. Augustus shows him the design, which is a golden bathhouse filled with vulgar details. Also, Augustus asks Marcus to carve a goddess with big booties. Lucius is offended by the whole idea, and he leaves. But he trips and falls into the water. Meanwhile, in Japan, a rich old man asks a young architect named Yoshida to build a Roman-style bathhouse filled with lots of vulgar details. He shows off his golden bathtub and naked goddess. Yoshida is also offended by the whole idea. Just then, Lucius arrives from the koi pond. He sees the designs and makes his own changes for Yoshida. When Lucius sees the naked goddesses, he is rightly offended, so he shows his own improvements. Despite their language barrier, Lucius shows Yoshida how it's done. Yoshida actually starts enjoying the whole learning process. Lucius gets offended when he sees the unnecessary golden bathtub, but Yoshida shows him that it's not his own choice. A rich old man made him do this. Lucius starts relating to him after this. So, they decide to remake the bathtub with the statue of Diana. That way, it'll look classy instead of tacky. When Yoshida goes away for a while, Lucius disappears. Yoshida creates the bathhouse with all the advice, and it was a huge success. Meanwhile, in Rome, the Augustus bathhouse also opens. With the view of the moon and the goddess, it's a huge success as well. Sometime later, Emperor Hadrian adopts a son and makes him his heir. 
In Lucius's household, his wife Livia is trying to convince him to do the honka honka with her because she wants a child. But just then, Hadrian's men command him to come to another town immediately. Livia is furious because Lucius has promised to spend this vacation time with her. She leaves him and goes back to her parents' house. Lucius goes to Hadrian's palace, where he is shocked to see a man shamelessly kissing a girl in public. Inside the palace, Hadrian has become old and he is not doing well in terms of health. Hadrian introduces him to his adopted son, Aelius. Turns out, Aelius is the same shameless man that Lucius saw earlier. Since the people of Rome are not sure about Aelius, Hadrian asks Lucius to build something new to show that Aelius is the right choice for the throne. Lucius does not think that Aelius is a good fit for being the next emperor, but he respects Hadrian, so he does it for him. Lucius goes to the famous Trajan bathhouse to think up something. There, some kids play around and everyone gets tired of their constant racketing. If a bathhouse for men and kids could be created, then that would gain everyone's favor. Suddenly, a kid knocks him into the water and Lucius wakes up in a water park. He is immediately met with the water slides and their awesomeness. In another building, he sees kids playing around in an artificial current. In a massage chair, he is pleased with the massages. He goes down the water slide and he immediately enjoys it. When Lucius returns to Rome, he inputs the designs. Hadrian commissions the constructions, claiming that it's a gift to the people from the new Emperor Aelius. All this to gain the favor of the Roman people. However, the people start bickering over who gets to go first, and they completely ignore the kids. But then, Aelius takes command and tells the men to go in an orderly fashion. Lucius is pleasantly surprised to see this leadership quality in him. Meanwhile, the senators are furious that Hadrian has not been focusing on expanding Rome's borders. And the new heir, Aelius, has gained the public's favor because of the new bathhouse, so they decide to remove Lucius from Rome. Meanwhile, Lucius is sitting depressed because of how his wife left him. He gets a message from the Senate commanding him to go to a particular remote area to scout locations for Hot Spring, to improve Emperor Hadrian's health. The site is known for bandits, but Lucius goes nonetheless for the sake of his emperor. Just as expected, a group of bandits stop him. However, the bandits have not bathed in a long time, so they really, really stink. Lucius says that the bandits have treasure in their area and shows them the hot springs that can be found there. The bandits think that there really are treasures, so they help him in moving the rocks around. Lucius shows them the beauty of a warm bath, and all the bandits actually start enjoying it. Suddenly, Lucius falls into the water and he comes out in a town that was built on a hot spring. He takes some random clothes that he finds there. Since the whole town is a tourist destination, he becomes enamored by all the things there. He sees some girls trying to shoot, so he shows them his Roman skills and hits bullseye after bullseye, and he wins a prize. Lucius finds some money in his clothes, so he goes back to the first location and gives them back to their original owner who was looking for them. Suddenly, he gets an idea, and he exchanges his Roman coins, which are pure silver, for Japanese currency. Using the money, he goes to eat ramen. He is shocked by how beautiful everything looks, smells, and tastes. He pays it with the money that he got earlier, and he is shocked that the paper was also a currency. He buys a shell souvenir to take back. Later, the monkey falls back into the river, so Lucius jumps after it. And he wakes up back in Rome. Using everything he saw in Japan, Lucius replicates an entire hot spring town here. The bandits also start working an honest life. They're doing all right. Lots of people come here, and they're rich now. Sometime later, Emperor Hadrian comes to the new hot spring town, and he has brought with him Livia. Hadrian apologizes for indirectly causing a rift in their marriage. Livia is also happy to see Lucius. She sees all the beautiful things Lucius has created for the empire, and she finally comes to appreciate his work. After all, all baths lead to Rome. If you enjoy the series, don't forget to leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.